going to master the all-time Kiwi dessert, the pavlova. So I thought, who better to go visit than this lady here? I'm keen to find out Genevieve's special techniques for creating the perfect pav. Baby, I love it. Anything that can be done with the pavlova, Genevieve Knights has done it. Her latest book, Pavlova, <laughs> is dedicated to New Zealand's most iconic recipe. Genevieve is also an accomplished food writer and stylist and has her own business providing gourmet food hampers. We're going to make a lemon and lavender pavlova. Ah. So we're going to use lemon juice instead of vinegar and we're going to flavour it with some English lavender, which is the non-toxic variety of lavender. Ah, you so can you can't actually lemon. just go and pick whatever lavender you see growing in your garden well, and use it, right? <laughs> you could try, but um, well, you would know that you're absolutely safe if you use actual English lavender. Mm, does it actually make you sick? Is it poisonous or you don't know? Well, I don't actually know. It could make you sick, so that's probably oh, just yeah, okay. it's I not even going to So I noticed you just used the little seedy parts. You didn't actually that's use right. the, the end flour. I took off the end flour because I just want to save that for when we garnish at the end to decorate yep. the cake. And I've chopped off the little tiny stems and that's the chopped bud ready and to And that's go. actually going to go in, into your That's pav. going into the pavlova. Oh, wow. It's an awesome. amazingly subtle flavour. It's not strong It's not too all. strong or anything, because it does actually smell quite strong. So that's you'd think right. it would come yeah. through in flavour. That's right. Yeah. What are some of the tips that you can give me in making a pavlova? Well, I think as Kiwis, we should really just relax a little bit. The pavlova is so yummy, even though it's a little bit brown and it's got some cracks in it, and we should just relax a little bit and enjoy it for what it is and not try yep. to make it something else. Well you know what goes in it for sure, right? Eh? That's right, absolutely. <laughs> wow, so you want it nice and thick. So this is really thick now and it's hard to get it to Big tip for today. <laughs> yeah, because I notice you've still got half the sugar left. I've only got half the sugar in there. You don't need to stand there all day whipping in the sugar. You can just add half of it in once you've whipped it till it's really thick. Oh, so it saves you time. That's right, heaps of Cause time. Because that's probably the big fear is that it takes so much time to make a pavlova. Because they need to dissolve that sugar and that's just not true at all. So now you've got the oh. lavender, you've got the lemon in. Yep, and, this and is all we the... need is the lemon juice, which we're substituting now with the Should vinegar. Should I um, so cut it for you? And... A tablespoon of lemon juice. Just the lemon, we took the zest off. I'm just going to squeeze out a tablespoon. Add that in. Perfect. Takes a tablespoon instead of two teaspoons of vinegar. So it needs a little bit of extra lemon juice. And it's ready. Alrighty, so we've got our paper here and you've marked a little circle yeah. and that's about... That's just a full point pen, 20 centimetre circle, yep. just to cool. give us a rough guide of where to put the actual mix. Sweet as. So I'm going to make a vanilla banoffee pav and I'm just wondering, do I put the Hansel's vanilla paste straight into the this mixture? Uh, you can actually and the vanilla bean paste works really well with pavlovas because you can see the little seeds all the way through it and it just looks extra exotic. Oh very cool, nice. Very, very nice, nice, very nice. So, there so, you go. So, palette knife, I'm just going to... Oh that looks really good. Have a go at shaping it now, and this just really helps too. This is like tiling. Straighten up the sides, they're brick, brick layer. <laughs> yeah, brick layer. <laughs> Don't need to take it right to the lines, but yeah, you don't worry about it, eh? There it is. No fuss. No fuss into and the And straight oven. into the oven. Straight into the oven. Well, thank you so much for your tips. They've been so handy. Okay. And wish me luck on my pad. Oh, you'll be fine. Excellent. Baby, I love it. So I'm going to give this vanilla pav a crack. We've got four egg whites straight into a mixer. I don't have much time, so I'm actually going to put the whole amount of sugar in. And the good thing about this Breville Wiz is that it's actually got a 10 minute counter on it. So I can just turn it on, and it's flashing 10 here. And then it starts counting down. This is looking good. And it tastes good too. Okay, next part. We've got vinegar, some corn flour. Now I'm going to use the Hansel's vanilla paste. Now I like this vanilla paste because one teaspoon of the vanilla paste equals one vanilla pod. So you don't have to worry about fluffing around and scraping out the pod. Plus you can see all the flecks in it. And it actually shows up in your cooking and your baking as you use it. So it's really cool. Now 
I've got one teaspoon in the recipe, but I actually really like vanilla, so I'm going to put a little bit extra. Excellent. So we've got that. And give it a mix up. So you want to break up all the corn flour and make it into a paste. And then we're going to be adding this into our pavlova mix. And now we need to mix it for another four minutes. After the break, I'll put the finishing touches on my pav and then it's off to the garden to get some rosemary from my braised lamb recipe. I'm making my banoffee vanilla pav. So far I've mixed my egg whites and sugar and added the vinegar, corn flour and vanilla paste. Now we're going to shake my pav and get it into the oven. Excellent. Now that's perfect consistency you can see. Also if you look nice and close you can see all the little flecks from the vanilla paste. Now this is ready to go onto the baking paper, which you'll see I've drawn a 20 centimetre circle. Make sure that you get all the mixture out, nice and glossy. Now you just want to shape it. I'm just going to make a round disc. So remember it doesn't have to be perfect. It's your pav. Shape around the sides. So just space it out, flatten it off, and there you go, it's ready to go in the oven. So this is a really important part. You'll notice that the temperature is at 180 degrees. You need to turn it down, right down to 100, before you go in and put your pav in, which will go in for an hour. Now for the top of our pav, we're going to make some pralines. So we're going to put some sugar into the saucepan and a little bit of water. Now turn this up to medium heat. It's best if you have a glass lid because you can actually see in it and watch the change in the sugar, watch the colour change. But if you don't, just make sure you keep an eye on it and place a lid on top. The reason you want a lid on the top is because the moisture builds up and drops down the sides and it stops the sugar from sticking. It's starting to go caramel now so it's ready for the almonds. Throw the almonds in there and you want to give it a good stir. Coat the almonds in the caramel, leave it for just a little bit longer Okay, I've got to start to move really quick here. I'm going to spray my tray with my avocado spray. Perfect. Now, if you start to see it's going really brown and you want to stop the cooking, just dip it into some cold water. Stop the cook. Now, before you go anywhere else, just place that under there to dry. Turn off your oven. And we're just going to pour this. Be really careful with hot sugar or toffee because it is super dangerous to get it on your skin. So if you do get onto your skin, dip it straight into cold water and hold it in cold water. Once your pav's cooked, leave it in the oven to cool completely down. And this helps prevent it from cracking. So I'm just gonna rest this here and we're gonna move on to our topping. So our praline's been cooling now, so now it's nice and hard. So I'm just gonna break it up and blitz it. I just want nice little chunks. So I can sprinkle that on top of the pav. A couple of blitzes and it's done. Now for the topping. I've got some whipped cream here that I put some more of that Hansel's vanilla paste through it. Now it's great to go into custards as well because you can see all the flecks through it. And I've got some sliced bananas. Now. I cut these up just a little bit earlier and coated them with some lemon juice to stop them from browning. So place these around, all around the cream. This is looking good for my second pair of ever. Now, last of all, a blitzed up praline. And you just want to scatter this around. A handful, a little bits, last. Voila, here's my twist on the classic kiwi pavlova, and it wasn't that scary. Knowing where my food comes from is really important to me, so I try to grow as much as I can myself in my little home veggie garden. Well, I came out to grab some rosemary and I got a little bit distracted because my baby rosemary plant, not so baby anymore, now needs to be repotted. Now, I thought I'd show you a couple of things about doing this. You want to squeeze it first and also make sure 
that the soil is nice and moist before you go and transplant it. Plus, just release some of the, the roots down the bottom so they don't come all like bounded at the bottom. And place it into your pot and top it up with some soil. Now you want to just firmly push the soil down around the outside and then loosen it up as it comes up towards the top of the rosemary. Push it down, a little bit more. Now, the best way to do this is in the shade because you don't want to stress out the rosemary any more than what you have to. And keep it in the shade for the next couple of days just to let it settle and just loosen up the top. Last of all, you want to give it a good feed. So I'm using some Veggie Max and I've just mixed it in with some water and just pour it around the top. Give it a good water. There you go. And like I said, keep it out of the sun. Now, back to my rosemary for the lamb. Take it from the top so that it can keep growing bushy. Baby, I love it. Now, I'm making today braised lamb neck chops and a plum sauce. I've got a few artichokes and then some tomatoes, so it's all full of goods. We want one onion finely diced in this recipe. So I'm going to show you a little tip on how to dice an onion. You may already know, but for those of you that don't, you want to start off with a sharp knife. Slice it down the middle, keep the end on because that's the part that makes you cry. One bit there, one bit there. And keeping your fingers out of the way the whole time so that you don't chop off your little fingers. And look, there you go. That's what you're looking for. So it's nice and even and consistent all the way through. And now I'm going to show you the chilli. A little bit of a tip. We don't, I, I hardly ever use the seeds because it's just too hot. I'm not much of a hot, hot food eater. But you've got the chilies inside so you just want to roll it around in your hand. And you'll see they'll start to pop up. Watch out where they go because you don't want to get them lost in your dish. Now you can either just go outside and give them a good flick outside or just in your sink and you just give it a good flick and they all hear that and most of the seeds are gone. So you can just cut it in half, finely dice that. Now the red chilli I like to use because it gives a little bit of colour as well to it. So it's quite cool. And now I'm just going to heat the pan. So crank up the heat. I'm going to get it to a medium high heat but you don't want to brown the onions so just keep an eye on that. We're also going to use high heat oil. Now I like to use the high heat oil because it's got pretty much no flavour to it and I don't want to add any more extra flavours but it's got a smoke point of 220 so I can heat it right up and not burn the oil. After the break I'll finish off my lamb in a delicious plum sauce.